Immaculate is what my grandmother called the 50 cent word. It is not by any stretch of the imagination a word used day to day, but when it is used, it is a word reserved for perfection, which is to say it is reserved for things that cannot realistically be expected of this earthly world. And this understanding of immaculate makes a great deal of sense when considering the history of the word. From the Latin immaculatus, meaning without stain, the word was originally used to describe the state of souls possessed by the most holy individuals in the Catholic religion. To have a soul free of stain was very much the goal of any God-fearing individual. Realistically, however, no human could achieve this state here on earth. Their humanity prevented it. Perhaps this is a good thing. If vices and virtues define the individual, is this not our E-class ticket to break free from the pure white, the bleached pulp of perfection? Yes, it is our flaws and our exceptionalities that define each of us as an individual, ever so slightly arching our trajectories towards the color that most correctly identifies our souls. There is no question that we are all stained. To be other than perfect is to be human and we should not break away from this notion. However, let us not look upon our colors as the stains that separate us from the divine, but rather a birthmark denoting our existence in the tumultuous, glorious and perfect world that we live in. In this pursuit of allowing individuals to go beyond simple acceptance of their stains and moving into a realm of embracing who they are, I needed some way to bring individuals' colors to the surface. I needed a way to delve into the most intimate and guarded caverns of people's minds, fully aware that such access is typically reserved for the closest of family and the most honorable of friends. Knowing this, I asked individuals to be examined to consider the colorful imperfections that define themselves by the one person who knows them best. I ask for self-reflection. In terms of the medium used, a simple paper and pencil format proved the most practical, A, because it removed any third party from interfering at the very moment of self-reflection, and B, because it allowed for easy recording of how individuals answered the questions presented to them. In pursuing the perfect personality test, I researched many contemporary and historical examples, considering the positive attributes as well as the drawbacks of each. There was general consensus among tests that at the end of evaluation, the best resolution was to place people into broad understandings focused on select number of traits. I agreed with the premise that characteristics define the individual and we all have tendencies to bend towards or away from a particular question or an attribute. However, conformity was systematically championed over nuance, and this was a problem. The solution came in consideration of visible light, that ever so small segment of the electromagnetic spectrum that contains every single color capable of conception. After all, if the end game was to allow individuals access to unique colors that represented who they are, why not take inspiration from light itself and evaluate personalities on a spectrum that honors nuance? Because white light can be formed in an additive process consisted of equal parts blue, green, and red, varying the levels of these three colors would ensure incredible variety and scope of the colors achievable. These three colors were then bound to the three prevailing criteria with undisputed relevance given that they appeared time and time again in current personality tests. These criteria are logical versus compulsive, nurturing versus austere, and independent versus social. With logical versus compulsive bound to the levels of blue present in a person's color identifier, and nurturing versus austere and independent versus social tied to green and red respectively, the general format was solidified. To put it in Seussian terms, these would be my three axes. The merging of the three criteria with the three primary colors of light was not a union taken lightly. Great care was taken so that the color's representation was intuitive, given that cultures have prevailing associations for colors. Investigation of these cultures went well beyond the Western tradition. Japanese, Hindu, Native American, Chinese, Asian, Muslim, African, South American, and many other cultures were sampled. Only with transcultural alignment between meaning and color was the intertwining finalized. Take the marrying of the color red and the independence versus social axis, for example. In the Western tradition, red is considered a color reserved for anger, danger, excitement, and passion, and this is echoed in the Japanese tradition. 
Moreover, in the Hindu understanding, red symbolizes energy. Eastern European as well as African interpretations were those of good luck. With these somewhat varied interpretations, an underlying commonality between all is a sense of independence that surrounds the color red. Red is the color of the soldier about to brave the beaches of Normandy, and it is the color of a certain synesthetic Dutch painter who may or may not have lost an ear. Those who seek an independent consideration of the world around them and pursue all things passionately are those who act in accordance with red. By contrast, those who act socially would not possess a great deal of red within their color profile. This would allow the social butterflies of the world to trend more towards the other axes of color, with any red present taking a tertiary role. With respect to green, the tying of the nurturing versus austere axis was chosen with great care. In the Western world, green is thought of as a color associated with the growth and goodwill. Nature is not surprisingly associated with the color green, and every major culture echoes this understanding of growth and nature within the context of green. Beyond this, the Chinese understanding of green places the role of repelling negative spirits and bad luck on the shoulders of green. Native North Americans thought of green as a form of personal power. In consideration of these various interpretations, the choice was made to associate the color green with the nurturing versus austere axis because the concept of growth in nature is strongly associated with nurturing and evokes images of a mother holding her newborn close to her chest to keep him warm in the December air. The converse understanding of this involves the lack of green and individuals who are more austere and do not possess the instinct to protect and provide for others. The absence of green belongs to the narcissists of the world forever gazing down into that pool of greed enamored with their own reflection. In the final consideration of the color personality trait pairing, the selection of blue to accompany the logical versus impulsive axis was made. This echoes the Japanese association between blue and the mathematics as well as scholarly applications. Indeed, it is also reflected in the Muslim tradition, where the color blue so often adorned mosques and phenomenal use of lapis lazuli and mosaics. It was used because it represented authority, a higher understanding from a higher power. Certainly, the devout considered knowledge passed from Allah to be of the highest understanding of logic and wisdom. Even in Western customs, blue is considered a color of intelligence and stability. Blue is the color of the chess player taking on so much more than just kings and queens, knights and pawns. And blue is the color of the scientist devoted to progress and truth above all else. In this understanding, the absence of blue in a color profile must symbolize a departure from logic, hence it being an indication of impulsiveness. Individuals expressing this character trait will see a reflection in the absence of blue in their color profiles. The test itself consists of 30 questions, 10 for each axis. In each question, or alternatively statement of evaluation, the subject was presented with two options, each representing extremes. Values between 1 and 7 were then used to gauge how strongly an individual felt towards one side or the other. For example, question 27 asks, to what degree is poverty a result of an individual's laziness versus a failure of society at large? On one side is the response, an individual's laziness, and juxtaposed is the response, a failure of society. This particular question assesses the individual's austerity versus nurturing qualities and how strongly they present themselves. If the person in question circles four, he indicates that he believes it was around a 50-50 mix of shared guilt. By the same token, if an individual answers with a one, they believe very strongly that poverty is a result of an individual's laziness and therefore would have a higher austerity score. A higher austerity score would then lower the levels of green in their color profile. With the parameters of the test finalized, many, many, many copies of the test were distributed, and from those returned, 102 were fully completed and therefore were eligible for analysis. This group represents 3,060 individual data points, and not one color profile was exactly the same. Each color had a potential range from 0 to 255, 
for easy conversion into a digital color profile. Due to this, each participant started at a neutral score of 127.5 for their red, blue, and green scores, where each question could potentially increase or decrease the score by 12.75, making both the theoretical minimum score of 0 and the maximum score of 255 possible over the course of 10 questions used to evaluate each criteria color combination. Based on the severity of how the question was answered, uniform approximations were made to stay true to the spectrum-based model and foster diversity in answers. It was a truly powerful experience to return my peers' color profiles to them. Upon receiving them, their immediate desire was to understand exactly what their color meant, and when the process was explained to them, many left beaming with pride. And perhaps best of all, this was a pride that did not rely on comparison. Sure, people love to share their color profiles, but no one person was better than any other. That is truly what I sought to convey. Allowing people to view their personalities as beautiful hues rather than stains gives each person the conviction to see themselves not as a work in progress, but as a whole and worthy person. In this sense, this experiment was highly successful. A great surprise of this experiment, however, was found when the averages for all individual scores were taken and the profile of the commons was created. What resulted was a color sample almost a pure white with an ever so slight tint. After the virtual kaleidoscope of colors seen in the individual tests, the average was a calm, almost true neutral. I think this speaks a lot about society, about how for all our eccentricities, we balance each other out in the whole. Returning to the original premise and understanding of Immaculate, we are certainly not pure and divine as individuals, and I don't think we were ever meant to be this way. However, in totality, the sum of humanity is something much more. The pure white scene in that little box is indeed Immaculate, but not because it represents the absence of stain and everything else. No, it is immaculate precisely because it represents the presence of all. Understanding the inner workings of people, what brings a smile to a little boy's face when he paints his first canvas, or attempting to understand the sheer jubilation a little girl feels when she scores the game-winning goal has always fascinated me. Exploring that chemical laboratory that rests atop a neck will always be my chief exploration in life whether that be in applications like this that swing towards the social science side or in self-published novels I crafted over years trying to grapple with characters that authentically relay mental illness and its interplay with addiction. For all the wonder we feel when we look towards the night sky, I wholeheartedly believe the greatest curiosity should reside not for the stars, but what rests between neurons. A complete catalog of the 102 profiles collected is linked in the description box below, as well as a blank test and the key should anyone want to find out their own color. I'll also link my email below if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or want to submit your own test so that I may reply to you with your own personal color profile.